Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you a 2021 comedy film, titled Spoiled Breaths. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Francis Bartek is a Polish descent millionaire that came to France and worked his way up in the construction business. Now living in Monaco, he has two sons, Philippe and Alexander, plus a daughter, Stella. None of them work, they live off daddy's money and are incredibly spoiled, Alexander keeps skipping class to sleep with women of all ages, Stella spends all day shopping, and Philippe keeps coming up with bad ideas for projects and dropping company chores his dad gives him in exchange for partying. All of them are terribly rude to servants and workers as well. One morning, Philippe comes to Francis' office with a very dumb idea, hiring people to break in your shoes before you wear them. Francis, who can't bring himself to scold his kids in any way since their mother died, says he'll think about it, but his associate and close friend Ferruccio points out how ridiculous the idea is. Philippe leaves after Francis gives him a package to deliver for the company, and Ferruccio scolds him for not being stricter with his family. The excuse of their mother's death isn't enough anymore, 15 years have passed and they're adults now. Meanwhile, at the Bartek mansion, Stella's birthday party has already started. Her lazy Argentine boyfriend, Juan Carlos, tells his audience stories of his land while continuously declaring his love for Stella while she gets more and more irritated by the lack of juice. She goes to the kitchen to yell at the service and is interrupted by Matthias, an old acquaintance of hers who is working with the catering service and doesn't hesitate to point out she's only happy to see him because he'll be working for her all night. Francis spends some time in his home office before joining the party, talking to a portrait of his wife while wondering where he went wrong and getting offended when his housekeeper, Marguerite, tells him he's depressed. He finally leaves the room when he hears some ruckus outside and finds Carlos destroying an expensive bottle of vintage champagne when trying to open it by throwing a golf ball at it. Obviously he's failed, but instead of accepting the responsibility, he blames the waiter holding the bottle for moving. Afterward, he and Stella request to talk to him in private, so he takes them back to his office and listens to them while cleaning his shotgun. Francis obviously doesn't approve of Carlos and he lets them know this when he hears he wants to get married to Stella, also pointing out that Carlos will be using Francis' money instead of what he supposedly has in Argentina. Stella gets angry and reminds Francis he's always been an absent dad, so this isn't her asking for permission to get married, she's just letting him know before the couple storms out of the room to keep on partying. While Stella announces her engagement to the entire party, making her best friend upset, Francis receives a call from Ferruccio telling him that as he suspected, Philippe never did the chores they asked him to, he went to a party instead, as confirmed by a video he's posted on social media. At that moment, the principal of Alexander's school arrives at the house ready to kill Alexander not only for skipping classes but also for sleeping with his wife. Alexander appears on top of the stairs then with both of the principal's daughters by his side because he's also been sleeping with them. The principal tells Francis he regrets accepting Alexander at his school as a favor after he was turned down by everyone else before chasing Alexander through the house. Seeing all his children getting in trouble like this together is the last hit to Francis' stress and his body finally gives in, causing him a heart attack. Francis wakes up later in the hospital with Ferruccio sitting by his side. His children arrive as well but instead of being considerate, they start arguing among themselves about dumb things, causing the heart monitor to show how Francis' heart is starting to beat faster under the stress again. Ferruccio kicks them all out before asking Francis if he thinks his wife would be proud of them. Two months later, the three siblings arrive at the house, desperate to find their father after discovering their credit cards and cell phones have been blocked and there isn't Wi-Fi in the house either. At that moment, a group of policemen arrive as well and start surrounding the house and taking their cars, claiming they have a search warrant. Francis shows up then with his shotgun in hand and tells his children to follow him so they can sneak out of the house, and when they reach the road, he makes a random driver stop by threatening him with his weapon, and the family takes his car to leave the area. As soon as they are out of sight however, Ferruccio appears next to the driver and pays him for his service. While driving to Marseille where they'll be safe, Francis explains the company is in trouble after some funds have been misappropriated, so their accounts have been frozen and now they're wanted by the law for fraud. The most likely suspect is Ferruccio, who disappeared the previous day. Francis doesn't want them to talk to anyone about this until it's solved, so he takes their cell phones and throws them on the street, which also helps them not to get tracked. When they arrive at Marseille, the siblings are horrified by the humble life of the middle and lower class, and their disgust gets worse when their father takes them to the place they'll be staying at, his childhood home, which has seen better days. Many of the light bulbs don't work and they'll have to share the bed, but it'll do for now. While having fried bread for dinner, Francis informs their kids that they'll have to get a job so they can survive. The next day, Francis wakes them up at 6 a.m., so they can start their search for employment while he stays home, fixing all the problems the house has because he can't go out there and let the police recognize him. Since he's fed them all their lives, now it's their turn to feed him. Getting ready to go out is quite complicated as well, the water that comes out of the tap is dirty and the sink is right there next to the toilet without a door in between. So Stella just throws perfume on herself while watching Philippe relieve himself without toilet paper to clean himself when he's done. Alexander tries his luck at a construction site, stealing lunch from some workers that kick him out and send him to talk to their boss if he wants to work. 
Stella borrows a phone from a random man on the streets and against her father's wishes, she calls Carlos to tell him she's on vacation with her family, consuming all of the man's phone minutes. Philippe goes to see a friend of his that has always supported his ideas to ask him for some money to finance them, but his friend finally admits he thinks his ideas are dumb and he just played along to have something funny to talk about while partying. Some hours later, both Alexander and Philippe return home without a job, and the same happens with Stella, although she carries some expensive clothes bags with her. It turns out she got some money by selling Philippe's watch, but instead of buying food, she's gone shopping. The siblings start arguing and as revenge, Philippe pours soap all over her new clothes. They're interrupted by the sudden arrival of Marguerite and Matthias, who Stella called earlier. She's brought them some towels and clothes, and Matthias tells Stella she can come over to the restaurant he works at for an interview. Marguerite also tries to give them some of her savings, but Francis turns the offer down and tells her to go after making her promise she won't tell anyone about this. The next day, Stella goes to the restaurant and is accepted as a waitress on trial. She has some trouble balancing the tray and drops things without meaning to, but she accepts to wash dishes and help gut the fish without complaining much. The clients drive her crazy though, and it takes her a while to learn which table is which and to take orders from multiple people in seconds. Meanwhile, Philippe goes to a job agency. The clerk is shocked to hear he has no experience or qualifications yet asks for a senior management position with a rather high salary and a company car, all paid off the books because he's in trouble with the police. After convincing him to lower his salary expectations, the clerk gets him a job as a bike taxi driver, which is rather difficult for him to pull off because of his weight. Since he's so slow on the bike, all of his clients end up being snatched by his rival driver Malik. Ferruccio secretly visits Francis and brings him some expensive wine and lobsters, which Francis at first doesn't want to touch not to be unfair to his children, but eventually he gives in and enjoys the feast. When Francis mentions he'll be keeping himself busy fixing the house, Ferruccio wonders if he truly is doing this only for the sake of the siblings. Suddenly, they can hear some noises coming from the house and they grab the shotgun to investigate, only to find that Alexander, instead of going job hunting, stayed in and slept all day. Francis quickly sends Ferruccio away and tries to clean the dishes before his son sees them, but it's too late, Alexander finds him and recognizes the lobster shell. Thinking quickly of an excuse, Francis tells him he's fished the lobster and Alexander believes it, saying nature always provides. At the end of the day, Philippe and Stella bring some money home, which Francis divides into food money and fixing the house money. When they hear the only thing Alexander did all day was to make a hammock and sleep, they get angry and don't share dinner with him. Alexander tells them he doesn't need them and goes to search for acorns, apples, berries, and other fruits from the bushes and trees around the house, but all the things he eats only end up making him sick later. The next day, Francis tells Alexander he can earn his share by helping him fix the house. He wonders why Francis never sold it, considering they didn't use it before this, but Francis only replies it has sentimental value. At the restaurant, Stella argues with a client after the man is incredibly rude to her because his dish was missing an ingredient. She's rather upset when she goes to the kitchen to ask for it and thinks of quitting, but Matthias points out this is how she's always treated waiters as well, so she shouldn't be surprised to get the same treatment in return now. Stella learns to open her eyes to reality and decides to stay and be humble, so Matthias rewards her by showing her what they do to rude customers, the cooks spit on their food. Afterward, Stella starts working extra hard, cleaning floors and washing dishes as needed. In the evening, after dinner, the siblings start arguing about who will wash the dishes, and Philippe accidentally mentions Stella used to be anorexic. Francis is shocked by this news and wonders why she didn't come to him for help, so the siblings point out he's always been an absent father and mention all the things he missed because he had been busy working, Stella used to make herself throw up for a whole year until she lost 10 kilos, Alexander spent a night in jail when the police found him with some pot, and when Philippe spent two weeks in the hospital with peritonitis, his dad never visited because he was in Japan and wouldn't cancel his business trip. But they know their mother wouldn't have hesitated to fly over. Feeling like he's being put on trial, Francis leaves the room while claiming he can't be blamed for all their problems. The following day, Philippe finally gets tired of Malik constantly stealing his clients and confronts him for it. At first, they start arguing and it looks like they could end up in a fistfight as well, but they suddenly discover their mutual love for collector trainers and become friends. Meanwhile, at the house, Alexander fixes the plumbing, which impresses Francis. When he asks how he knows anything about this, Alexander confesses that in high school, he and his friends diverted the waste pipe into the principal's shower, and for that, he spent two months studying plumbing tutorials. Back in Monaco, Carlos is sleeping with Stella's best friend, who tells him about the rumors of the family's money problems and the person behind them. Carlos finds this very suspicious because he saw Ferruccio at the country club two days ago, so he decides to investigate. Later in the day, Francis apologizes for the father he's been, explaining how hard it had been for him to suddenly become father and mother at the same time, and that they had only hidden their mother's illness from them to protect them. The siblings think their father believes them to be spoiled and dumb, but Francis promises he's proud of them now. Then they spend a lovely evening together under the stars, sharing a drink and old stories from their youth. 
The family starts getting used to this new life together, doing chores and fixing the house while enjoying each other's company. Stella becomes close friends with his co-workers at the restaurant, and Malik teaches Philippe some tips for being a better bike taxi driver while they start working together to make some money off Malik's trainer collection. Ferruccio calls Francis and tells him to end the charade because Carlos has been snooping around, but it's too late, he shows up at the house a few hours later, revealing he's learned of Francis' lie while following Ferruccio around. Francis offers to pay him any amount of money he asks for in exchange for Carlos leaving them alone, but he turns the offer down, claiming he wants to help. When the siblings arrive, Carlos tells them he sold his properties in Argentina to pay the family's debts, so now they have access to their accounts and the mansion again. Not wanting his children to find out he lied to teach them a lesson, Francis plays along with Carlos' act and accepts to return to Monaco. When they make their way back to their house, Carlos points out now they can get married, and Stella accepts to kiss him, but she's more hesitant this time around. The next day, during breakfast, Francis tells Marguerite how guilty he feels and how worried he is about Stella marrying such a bad man like Carlos, and Marguerite encourages him to confess. When he discusses the matter later with Ferruccio, his friend thinks the same, so Francis accepts his fate and decides to talk to his children. Carlos knows Francis may open his mouth at any moment, so he takes Stella with him to get eloped. Stella isn't very happy with the idea, but Carlos promises her they can have a proper party and celebration later. As they enter the city hall, Francis calls Stella, but it's Carlos that takes her phone and picks up the call, pretending he's having a nice chat instead of hearing Francis angry yelling. He hangs up on him and tells Stella her father approves of their union while Francis grabs his sons and takes them with him to stop the wedding. The one officiating the wedding is the deputy mayor, who is mute so things are going rather slowly. When the ceremony finally starts, Stella discovers Carlos' real name is Kevin Lebutre. He tells her some excuse about his father being a refugee needing to change his name, and by the time he convinces her to still marry him, her family interrupts them. Francis tells her Carlos only wants her money and him having sold his properties to save them is not true. The family never was in any trouble, it had all been a lie Francis invented to teach their kids a lesson. The police they saw at their house that day had been paid actors. Stella slaps Carlos for what he did, then she leaves the room together with her siblings, none of them wanting to talk to their father ever again. Nine months later, Francis hasn't heard from his kids except for the monthly check they send him for living in his childhood home, but he's never cashed any of them and saves them in a glass bowl. After a business meeting with some clients, Ferruccio pretends to make a mistake while driving and takes a different road which turns out it takes them to Francis' old house. There are also flowers in the trunk for him to give Stella, since it's her birthday. In the house, the siblings are all doing very well. Philippe and Malik are making money selling trainers, Alexander works as a plumber, and Stella and Matthias are opening their own restaurant together. Their mood drops when Francis enters the house, and he notices how awkward things quickly get, so he just gives Stella the flowers and expresses his regret one last time before leaving. The siblings feel bad and decide to accept his apology, so they call him over and let him stay with them to celebrate all together as a family. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.